All right, hello again. I am back after God knows how long. I think my last video was supposed to be three months ago. And yeah, I'm here to show you something pretty cool. Sorry about the wait, I was destroyed by school over the past semester and finally had some time off and well, I have a few tutorials I really want to do. One's this one, which is a script for generating a building. It's really fast, it's really cool. And a friend showed it to me and I'd like to show it to you and find a tutorials online for it. So I would just do a quick one, a quick rundown. There's a lot of stuff I don't know about it yet, but it is a huge script packet. Another one's a caustics tutorial, so making water, the cool looking things of water at the bottom. I kind of have it down, don't really. I kind of want to change it up a bit, see if I can do a few more things with the lighting. But other than that, let's get started on this one. So for this one, what we're going to do is use this beautiful script by Tyson Abel. What it is is Building Generator, version 7 now. It was updated, oh, 2009, long time ago. Oh, that was submitted. Updated 2009, long time ago. Um, what it does is it generates all these styles of buildings. Let's see if we open this image in your tab, you can see the types of buildings. It can generate almost any type of looking building with really just a procedural click of a button. There are some problems with the script I've seen. It loves to crash when you're making it over the size of a uh, plane, when you're putting them over top of a, just putting them on a plane and telling them where to uh, randomize themselves. It likes to crash, but for backgrounds and for small buildings and for a fly through, like if you see this one here, it won't play very well because, well, my little uh, annoying, how should I say it, screen recorder doesn't like to play very nicely with this. But as you can see, you can get some very cool looking buildings like that um, with just the click of a button. So what we're going to do is download it, and the download link is right, oops, this one, yeah, this one right here, download URL. So down, we download this, um, I don't think I need to download it. Oh, and this brings you to this website. I thought you could just download from here. Guess not. All right. I've downloaded anyways. I don't remember anything. So you go to this site and download the script here. Right in front of me. It's 2.30 a.m. I'm kind of tired. But anyways, download the script here and save it into your scripts folder of Macs. So download it. Actually, let's just download it and redo it again. And I'll show you my folder. Hey, look at all my scripts. Hey, I have it downloaded twice already. One's broken because that's only 153 bytes. And that's the 687. So it should be this one. Extend Mac. so confusing. Well, that's the MCR. I need to put this in a uh, file. All right. So you just put this uh, script inside your scripts folder of Max. And that should be located under your computer. C drive, Autodesk, not Autodesk, program files, Autodesk, and 3ds Max 2012 for me. I'm using 2012. This works on versions 2009 and up, so I'm pretty sure if you're using 2013, there shouldn't be a problem with it. Or 2011 or 2010. Those are all very good ones. And under uh, plugins, I think it's those ones. I just paste under here. Not under plugins. Jeez. Under scripts. I like those ones, right? And paste under here, and then there's in. MSC, which is a Mac script, the uh, script file, Mac script file. So it's under there. I have a lot of scripts in there. And they say sometimes you have to throw another one in your plugin folders, but I haven't had a problem with that. And I don't want to put another plug in there, and I have a lot of plugins in there anyways. So I'm just going to say that. Put that under your uh, scripts folder, and let's go to Mac script, run script. And let's run the building generator version 07. This is another building generator I'll quickly show you later, which I found while looking for this one. And it's good, but this one's, it's, they have very different purposes. This is more interiors and just setting up the walls. This is exteriors and setting up the buildings. So we'll press open. And first what you'll be noticed with is an insanely complicated UI. I like comparing this UI to one of Krakatoa's rendering system because it makes no sense when you first look at it. It is a buttload of stuff to look at. So really all you have to know right now is on your left hand side, so this side over here, all well, this side is your building. It's like your wall is the pieces of your building, your floors, your walls, your doors, your roofs, your materials, right up here. 
this over here, this main structure settings, is the building itself. So we'll have seven floors on the building with a bevel angle of 40. These are based off Max's baseless units. Uh, if you throw it over to inches, it'll just go to inches. Stuff like that. So if you're doing real world scale, I would, since this only goes up to max length of I think 80, I would throw this into decimal feet before doing anything with it. So if you do that, and I'll go 40. That would be my my uh, suggestion if you're doing it real world units for proper lighting and proper caustics and all that stuff. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We'll put a quick little lighting in it, but maybe physically proper. And this is the bevel angle of right here. And you'll see that later. And this is your width of your walls, like the number of walls that are across the size of your building, and the number of walls are the width and length, uh, number of walls down the building and across the building. So I'll just quickly make this, and this actually is just generating over surface. This is pretty buggy, like the randomizing the structure values. It's crashed almost every time I've done it. So we'll just hide that for right now, and uh, I'll click that little button. So what we'll do is we'll just generate a quick building to show you with pieces. As you can see, it's working. It's really slow. That's good. So right now, as you see, quick building generator with some cool looking uh, pieces on the top. Yeah, nice little staircase and a few little windows. It's okay, I guess. You could wrap, slap the material on there and it'll be all right, but it's not what we want. Also, this will just show us. Let's break it down. So as you can see, I'll just pull it over to the side here. And actually, <laughs> I'm going to miss it a while. There, I'll pop you above it. So there you go. Um, it just lets me keep it centered nicely for you guys. And OK, let's go through this. So as you can see here, the wall length right there is 40 units. The wall height is 30. So between there and there is 40. Between here and here is 30. Um, the width of the walls, as you can see, there's three walls across, three walls across, with the walls, four walls across, four walls across, and bevel. There's an amount of bevel. So you can drop down to 15 and you'll see the difference. So right now I'll just delete this button. This button deletes the previously generated building or buildings, depending on if you did multiple. So just delete it. Actually, no, I don't want to do that. I'll just generate a new building to see the difference of it. Nice thing about the script is it put everything, you can make it go on layers, and it also puts everything in a group for it to easily move around. As you can see, the chamfer of the sides is now smaller because I put down my bevel up there. So this bevel is smaller. And really, that's just for the main structure setting. So this controls the bevel of your sides if you have it selected here. This controls the amount of uh, windows across, or walls, it's called, width. Of, yeah, the number of width walls and the number of height, uh, length walls. Called that, but really it's segments. Just replace walls with segments and you'll be fine. And this gives you amount of, so this is your width, this is your length, this is the amount of bevel, and as you can see there are seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll nicely uh, delete that out there, and delete that out there. So you can start from scratch. So first what we're going to do is just make a very basic cookie cutter office building. Nothing very imp uh, impressive, just very basic block building. Very simple one to start with. Um, but we want the bottom floor to kind of look a bit different than we do for the other walls, other floors. So what we do is we'll just make building itself and then we'll work, work from there. So really for this one we want is no bevels on the side. We just wanted a brick wall. So turn off the bevels. You just hit these B buttons right here. And there you go. You can see the difference. You can see it showing up in this uh, feedback. I don't know what it would be called. Preview feedback? I guess it would be. And since that's good enough, we'll have yeah, 15 floors. Sometimes it's crashed on me. Now let's do 10 floors. It's crashed on me at 15. And we want it kind of squarish. So we'll do yes yeah, 5 by 5. The wall length and wall height will be fine. We don't really worry too much about that. And just to see where we're at, we'll press generate. Now, it's an all right building. It looks like a square office building. Nothing big, nothing different about that. Um, there's no windows. That's always a bad thing. Like, you, you know, you want to want something with windows. Yeah, windows. 
like the man I'm tired. Alright, so I want something with Windows, and we don't really like this right now, but it's starting. It's got a nice little space, so we'll delete that out by pressing this button, it just deletes it out. And we'll go under the walls, and Max just crashed on me. Uh, no, I don't need to save the scene. Close that out, and hey, look, the script. Oh, and also look, kitty. There's a kitty in the background. So, as I said, this script has some bugs to work out. Sometimes it doesn't like you pressing that delete button if you've clicked away from it. Um, it has problems with itself. It's an old script. It has problems running with new things in Max. Makes sense, but we can get that back right away. Um, Max script, run script, and build a generator. Load up. And let's get back to where we were. Bevel, 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 fours, bevel, five, bevel, bevel, and generate. And there we go. So, we got that again. That doesn't seem right. Okay, that's right. And I'll just press delete on that now instead. So I'll save this because the last time that one just didn't like me in my documents. 3DS tutorials. For some reason I don't think those are my tutorial ones. Huh. You know my computer. Oh man, you guys went around when that happened. My computer had a seizure and I lost a lot of work. I don't think. No, you guys are around because definitely field tutorials on there. Color edge tutorial, I don't even know what the heck that is. Anyways, I'm getting off track, so let's put this as building generator. And building generator. Yeah. So, as you saw, we had a building, we didn't really like it. What we're missing is some windows. So, this, so our floors were all right, we had the amount of floors we had with the kind of edge. Let's you know, not do, we didn't have them exactly how we looked up, so we wanted a new set of floors. So we'll put new on here, and we want the base floors to look different. So right here it says apply settings to floor one to star. Star means the top. We we'll only want this to the bottom floors. So put one to two, and then this one will go from two. Actually, we want one to one. So it's just the first two floors, and this we want to go from two to ten, or we can just do two to star for the top. So two to star for the top, and this goes one to one. So one to one, we kind of want it to be beveled nicely, and all fairness like that. And we'll scale it down by 0.8. Fence to board type, I don't even know what that is, so we'll just leave it fence. And this is one to one without the bevel. And we'll see how that looks. So we got something like that. For some reason the this didn't go down properly. Ah well. I'm not too too worried about that. I thought that's how it worked properly. Let's see. Turning on per layer will cause floors within a specific range to be scaled by the desired amount. This will give the floors a taper like no per layer effect is the table for why is that active? Ah, uh, so it does it per layer, so it's that one and the next one's a bit smaller and the next one's a bit smaller. Blah blah blah. All right, I see where that's going, um, but we'll delete that out and let's try well what wall looks like. And generate. Yeah, it didn't really do much. I don't think. What we do want to do is on the second floor though is turn on ledges. This will turn on a nice little ledge around the edge of it, and it should have supports, spacing of 50%. You can draw the ledge contour if you want, but I'm just going to use a straight. Uh, straight and basic ledge. So we'll move that building out again. I don't like using this X button because it has lots of bugs. And those are those ledges between uh, different, different floors. As you can see they're very slight edges. And for some reason the supports are in the middle. But that's alright. It looks good enough to me. I like that. We might, you know, want to make uh, not supports, no supports, and that should be good. So let's move that out and generate it out. 
There we go. Nice looking building. But as I said, we want something with the walls. So we want some windows on here. And windows start for two no matter what. You can't make it uh, start from anywhere else. See, it won't let you. Press one, it doesn't let you do anything. Two, it'll let you do it. And you can apply settings to all the walls, depending on which wall you want to apply to, and to the beveled walls if you want. So what we just want is some basic windows. Um, first, there's a wall maker, which makes the sections per wall, and you'll see better in the preview window. And the height of the offset, the percent of the width it takes up, the percent of height it takes up, and the, the offset it has. Um, so what you need to do is to bring up preview window, just press this preview button, it's right here. And we kind of want just one window per one wall. So we want some windows, and let's preview them. We don't really like that. They're not the best. They're good, but they're not the best. They're very household. We don't want that. Um, first, let's go to these uh, values here. So if we turn down to minimum one, it'll give you minimum one or maximum one. You can see now there's only one window there. We only want one window there, so that's good. Uh, we want it to only have 10% on the other side, so we want it to pick up most of the wall. You don't really need a height offset, but you can turn it on just see how it looks. See, it pushes it up, so you get a nice little bathroom look with that. And next, what we want is just, eh, we don't need any ledges for it, or do we? Yeah, ledges look kind of cool, but we'll keep them like that. Under Windows, we don't really want this complex window. We just want a very simple, simplistic window. So I'll drag this down so I can see this more. And then also, it's really hard to see. You have two sliders. You have this slider, which is the main one, and then you have this inside your wall maker. So this is your wall settings slider, and this is your wall maker slider. So we'll go under here. We only want a simple window. So we'll preview that. And let's pull that back up. And that's kind of basically what we want. We want a preview, we want that, and we want our ledges. Let's look at the cooler. And we want it supported by some sort of triangle or something. So we'll preview that again. And we have a little support down there, maybe a rectangular thing. Preview it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, we got a nice little walls in there. We don't have any indents. What is really nice, though, is these values will only matter if you've selected something up here to select. So, therefore, it's checked off will be able to change around. It's nice to know is these three dots means you have it selected, or these three asterisks. Asterisks? Asterisks? These three starters means you have it selected and therefore you can change it around, or it will be changing around. You can easily see this. If I turn on covers, you can see them pop up. If I turn on covers, they pop back down. But for right now, we kind of want this. However, we kind of want the lower windows to make me look more like store windows or something. So want well, maybe floors two to one, two, three, four, five. Two to five to have two windows and five up to have one window each. So easily enough to do. We just add a new layer in here. And we want two to five to have two windows. So under here, let's pop these to two. We do that out. These ones, however, we want one window. And this is six to star. We only want one window for each. We want windows, preview them. Don't like those though, we want the simple windows. Preview those, no ledges, just simple windows. And that's what we want for those top floors. So we'll delete this out, close out our preview window, and generate the building and see what that comes up. First we can save this file though. And this one might have crashed. Nope, it didn't. Thankfully. And as you can see, we have windows. Two windows at the bottom, one windows up the top, and there is our building for pretty quick. As you can see, we can see inside this, so that's why we built those ledges in there. It'll give us a nice little floor and open floor thing if we render it out. You can see the floors. This will give us a very good start to uh, actually work in conjunction with the other script I have for you guys. I wouldn't, I won't show it to you today because this is already 20 minutes we can build one building and I kind of want to build three. But that is a very simple building. Next thing you want to do is the ground floor. So as you can see, something very simple. Turn, turn this off, close the wall maker, and let's go under doors. Doors is the same thing very much. You got the preview window right here. 
and you got your settings under here. It follows the same thing. You turn on the settings, it shows the three asterisks you can change around. So it'll turn on door. That doesn't look like an office door to me. It just really doesn't. We kind of want a cover for it, or a little mini roof they call it. So we'll just turn on the mini roof. This is a mini roof. And under doors, we will change those around. We want just a yeah, we want a single door, but we just want it simple with a chamfered edge, just because yeah, you know, something like that. That's really what it is. Um, maybe maybe chamfered edges. Yeah, chamfered edges. You can see the double doors. It helps you out with that. But we don't want the spacing width to be 15. Like it just we want to take up most of the wall. So we'll preview that, and we might want the height a bit different. So let's put that to 15 again. Push it down, so it's pretty wide, pretty narrow wall, or pretty wide, pretty short wall. And we want some stairs going up to it, so something like that. You know, it looks pretty basic, but it looks good enough, right? So, we go under here, and since we have stairs selected, you can see it right here, stairs are selected, we can play around with the stairs. And yeah, there's right now there's three stupid things. You got your main, your main door settings, then your door maker, and now your wall settings inside your door maker has a little scrolly bar. So you gotta be careful that it can get pretty tedious pretty quickly. So we would, hmm, how many stairs do we want? That looks good enough to me. Maybe yeah, maybe five stairs. So we can have a stair border and a border rail. And if we preview that out, there we go. Kind of a nice little thing. I don't really like the border rail, it doesn't really scream uh, office building to me, but why not leave it in there, right? And when we got another mini roof, it looks good enough to me. Maybe a slanted roof would be cooler. The cylindrical roof looks really retarded, and that slanted roof looks pretty bad too. Cannot retarded, that's a bad word to use, and it looks really silly. There we go. And now what we can do is where do we want to put this fault? And so we apply the door to the front, the back, the left, and the right. We don't want it offset at all. We want it on the first floor. But uh, and I don't know why mini roof went all weird on me. Horizontal offset of one, and we'll put on one floor. So this horizontal offset puts it offsets it on the uh, offsets it on the area right here on the walls width and walls length. But I don't know why I won't let you put it right in the middle. It should, I'm just too stupid to know how to do that properly. So, let's see how the doors look on this thing. So we'll delete this out, and we'll generate our building. First, and I'll save this as a new file. And our building generator, and I will just go off this building. So just in case it does crash, you can quickly pick it up again. Uh, no, no. And generate this building. And there we go. Oh yeah, that's the offset. So see right now it thinks it's on the first uh thinks it's on the first one over, but we only want it on the third one. One, two, three. We want it right in the middle. So we'll delete this. And we'll generate. Oh Jesus, my head's getting sore. There you go. Now it's directly in the middle like we wanted it. We've got handrails going up to it, and we don't have the mini roof, which is annoying me, but I don't know why. Probably because I went up and down on that, so I guess don't do that. Um, but there you go. You got some doors on there. So it looks like a kind of bottom part of the door. And we got some ledges, and we got some windows in there. And now we're just going to work on the roof. Materials you can pull in uh, texture files for your own. But I haven't figured that out properly yet. So let's go into the roof. And under roof setting, it's pretty simple. Much not like the walls or doors anymore. You just get a roof ledge height and a roof ledge width. So that's just your ledge of it, your height and width of it. And I like doing 301. It's pretty similar. Form the building and shape is just totally good to me. And you got your roof type one, which is a uh, flat roof and your roof type 2 which is a slanted roof. We'll use this one quickly next in the next building we do. 
and the drain pipes. This is more for residential stuff, but it puts like drain pipes on the fronts and sides of your building. So we can add one to there and we'll generate out and see how that looks. So it's going to be on the front left of our building. And you can see it working in the way back down here. And see there's our drain pipe, front left of the building. Which doesn't look good, but that's what it would do. Actually it doesn't look bad though. And it looks like it fits. Surprisingly. Okay, I take back my word for it. So you can also set the minimum maximum roof antennas. You can turn them on and off. You can turn on your roof buildings, which are these things. Which are these things right here. These are your roof buildings. Uh, and your roof windows gives you a percentage of how likely they are per roof. So they're at 80 percent, so we got six of them, seven of them, seven of them up here. And the roof antennas are these things. And we have between two and four, so it got two for us. And in water buildings, we have between one and two. And we got one of those, so we got a low end of most of those. But there you go, a very simple way to create um, not the best looking office building, I must say myself. But not a bad one. So press M to bring up the material editor. M, material editor. And I'm going to put a nice little material on this. But first, I'm going to set it to be a mental ray. So I'm going to render, render setup, F10 if you want, or render, render setup. Go down here and go to the mental ray. And 13 will be my, uh, or I, my NVIDIA mental ray. And make sure it's production material editor so you can get access to these mental ray materials. You right click, materials, mental ray, architecture and design, best material you ever use, the only material you ever use. Turn off the reflectivity by right clicking these two sliders and the glossiness. Just drag and drop it onto this. Apply selection. And there you go. Nice little building. Looks much better with it. So we got a little office building in there. And next thing we want to do is why not we put in a little house building. So it's a much different style, but it is a really good style. All right. And it shows us a few different things. So we have a new building. Now we're going to go back to the floors. We're just going to remove these. And on the back of the walls, we'll remove these. There's no malls. We'll remove it. We're just removing everything. Um, remove that. So we have a new one. And this building is going to be a house, so it's two floors tall. It's going to be a cool looking house, so it'll have like a bevel on one side of it. Nah, bevel on three sides of it. Yeah. Oh no. Oh yeah, you can do that. We can do that. We can put indent on two sides, or invert point, they call it. No, it's just a chart. Ridiculous. I should stop saying that one. So we'll have a. Uh, for like that. And we'll generate the sale books. And that looks really big. The house isn't that big, but it does have a cool looking style to it. So what we want to do is only make them oh, two segments long and wide. And we want the length to be down to about, yeah, about 30. So we'll make them square. Move that out. By pressing the key there and press generate. And I'm not really an architecture guy, so I wouldn't know if I'm doing properly things. I guess it'll just be a small little, like, not a house, but a uh, hovel on the corner, I guess, sort of thing. But we won't have much of this roof stuff. So there's kind of our little starting part of it. Hovel, not hovel, um, I mean, like, rest stop, pit, pit stop thingy. Pit stop thingy. Rest area. Is it convenience stores? That's what they call those. But those are only one floor, so we'll put it down to one floor. We'll bleed it out again and we'll generate it. But it also is because of the roof that it's making it look like a corner store. Alright, so we got our floor settings look good. And we've got a few things there, a few things there. And look pretty good. So now let's go under our walls. We need to create a new one. And I really don't think we can actually do anything here because the five settings and that just clears it. Let's see if we can put these on the uh, ground floor by applying it to one to one, or if we'll crash the program. Uh, and 
All right, we should be able to do crash it, so we should be able to do this. Preview it, and we'll try some windows. And we will have some ledges for them. And you can see them. Oh, you can't see that. Jeez. And for previews, just switch render scanline. So we'll just switch to scanline. What I guess it does is quickly. Uh, switch to scanline. Okay, back to scanline. Uh, I guess so. That's something I didn't know. If you're working in this just in the previews and stuff, make sure it's in scanline render so it's much faster. I'm guessing it just renders it out. It finds where it needs to be and renders out a little preview for it. So for this little thing, we kind of want more homely looking windows with like blinds and stuff. So we'll put some blinds on it and we'll put some covers on it. And we'll have some pillars in between it, right? Because, you know, why not? And siding on the walls. So we have a lot more on this thing. Now you can even put shutters in it if you want. And you can see it showing up there is what, what's new that's happening to it. We'll close that and just put it again. And a bit too much stuff is going on right now. But we'll get rid of the pillars. Oh no, it's the shutters I don't like. You get the pillars, get rid of the covers, uh, get rid of the blinds, keep the siding. And yes, these are the shutters. Okay, these are the blinds. These are the shutters. All right, so there we go. Good. There we go. That's more what I wanted. We only really want one per side again, so we'll preview that out again, and something like that. We've got some siding on the wall. We've got some blinds in the background, and we've got some windows there under the ledges. And we just want them to be supported again by a rectangular. See the little rectangular support at the bottom of it. We'll go into the blinds. This one's pretty cool. The blinds is. You can make them open minimum or maximum. It'll pick the value between it, so you can make them open almost all the way. 90 to 90, and we'll pick that out. So they're open all the way. But you can have them closed. We'll preview that out. But I'd rather have them at 75. No, 375 open. So, and then the frequency, maybe 100. Why not? Preview. So something like that. And you can make them randomize the type per window, which randomizes between these two values per window or per wall. Since I only have one per wall, so it doesn't really matter. If you have like five or six per wall, it wouldn't matter a bit more. And I don't really like Venetian blinds. I like fabric blinds. So we'll get rid of Venetian. We'll turn on fabric and put some ripples in it, um, which I'm assuming is yeah, the ripples of it. And there we go. Because this is going to supposed to be a house, for example. So we'll drop, pull this down. Also, we have some. What else do we have here? We have some siding and pillars. So under your pillars, let's go under pillar. Under pillars, you can see that we're using it for these three dots. You can draw out your pillar, your pillar settings, which is hard to do properly, but it could be very useful. So what you do is under edge pillars, you turn on custom, and then you would draw your custom pillar thing. Um, these are the edge ones, and the middle ones are between windows in a certain wall. And the edge ones are on the sides of each wall segment. So if you have more than one wall, window per wall, you would use the middle pillars for between the windows and the edge pillars for on the sides of the walls. I just want a simple pillar. We don't have middle pillars, so turn those off so it doesn't have to slow down. And let's preview that out. So simple pillars, just on the sides of the walls. Looks good enough, right? And so we'll close that out. And now we have siding. And it just counts the number of siding per wall. So 15 is good enough for me. Breathe that out. And delete this and let's make another generate another building out of it. And there we go. We got some crazy looking windows everywhere. So this is where the height offset would work very well and apply settings to wall. We only want these to be really on the front on the side walls. So on the left and right wall. We don't want them front and back. And we don't want them on the front and back bevel. So we'll delete that out. And we'll generate again. So there we go. We got them on the front and the back. So this is where this is the bevel this is considered the bevel. This is considered the bevel. 
and this is considered the bevel. All corners are considered the bevel, and each wall segment is considered the walls. So there we go. What am I doing the front bevel? Let's see how that looks. Yeah, I like that better. Because we can put the window wall there, or the uh, door there. But what I do not like is the uh, what do you call it? I do not like the offset, the height offset. So I want it up above it, so it's not like the ground's getting in the way of it. So we'll put the 50. And now we will do that out. And if you remember what the height offset does, it pulls them up off the ground. It offsets the height of the windows. The standard. And there you go, the height offset. The supports are looking kind of awkward now. So we'll just turn those off. So ledges are supported, and we don't want that. And we'll do this out, and we'll generate them. I'm not a home designer. I am not an architect. I like this stuff, but I'm not one. So yeah. Um, so there we go. We got that. Now it looks kind of awkward without the siding on it. So what we want to do is make, put siding on the front, back, and the back bevels. So to do that, we put a new one of these in there, and it's from one to one, and it'll go in the back and the back bevel. It'll be, as you can see, left, right, front, back, front bevel. So this is the left, right, and the front bevel. So we want the back front for this, not left front, and we want the back bevel. And we just want siding on it, and that should work. We'll generate it again. Where's my There we go. We've got some siding on the walls. And oh, it's starting to look like a little house. So we'll close that out. And under this, we will go under doors. We can be later for it. And let's just see where the door goes first. Turn door. We want stairs to it. We'll figure this out. We want the sliding door. Oh, we want siding on it, of course, because we this is siding on it. And we want a bit of an indent, that's good enough. Um, simple with chamfered edges. That will be good. Actually, let's make it a single door. Let's preview that out. And single complex. Let's preview that. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So it is basic complex. You can change up the amount of horizontal panels, so these ones and the vertical panels. Those the panel widths there, but we're not going to. Um, we'll throw some lights on it. We need some lights by our door. And then we'll go under here and do that stuff. So number of stairs, it was good enough before, like that. Siding, we'll just use 15 because that leaves it even. And the lights, if we preview it out, we'll show what the lights look like. And there's three types, and you can always import your own. We got those little lights, which are cute. These little lights, which are awesome. Can't remember what type three is. I think type three is the triangular ones. No, they're the weird ones. I like type two personally, my favorite. They're kind of cute, and you can change the size and the spacing of them here. But I like actually how they hang right there. You can also import custom geometry. So you would just add your own the object, and you pick your unidentified object, and you could set that up depending on where you wanted it. So we like that, and I will want this on the front and back. And that's really it. And we will generate the building. And hopefully it doesn't override itself and kill itself. There it goes. Perfect. As you see, we have our door right there and our door right there. I really don't like the offset. I kind of want to offset a bit more. So I'm going to offset it to no, no, 4 1 horizontal offset 2. And generate again. And there we go, it's more in the center now. That one looks more in the place I want it to be. Now, the roof. No house has that many antennas, that many buildings, that many things on the roof. So, we'll go to the roof. 
And we don't want this roof type one. We don't want a flat roof like that. We want roof type two. And we want a tapered X. And you'll see what happens. We'll move that out. Regenerate. And it looks kind of awkward. So we'll try to taper it in a Y direction instead. And you'll see why I'm doing this quickly. See, that doesn't look that good either. It looks better though. It looks better. But what we want to do is segmentize it. And this, this will do is break the roof into segments based upon your um, wall settings here. And there you go. It makes it look much better. Gives a nice little uh, trust like feeling. Trust. Trust like feeling. And there is our cute little house. So nothing too big. Nothing too crazy, but we literally built a house within 20 minutes. Jesus, do not do that. Postpone, screw off, you Windows update piece of crap. Okay. Now that I'm not, you know, go crazy about Windows update. You can see how it was so simple to make a quick little house. And really, it looks not bad. It looks like a house. It wouldn't be a house I would put in the front of everything. But what it would be is from here, from that far away, you don't want to model a crazy house. So what you want to do is just put a few values in here. Good house. You rent, take a render of it. Looks like a house. Oh, I see why you're not doing it because it's scan line now. That's why that was a rendering. All right, I just figured out something why my final project did not horrible in animation, but whatever. That is a house, and next to our little office building. So, this is just scratching the surface of this amazing script. It has so much more to offer. Um, under floors, you can see under here. There's generating interiors. You can go on YouTube and you can find a lot of cool things people have done with it. I just haven't found a tutorial for it, so I decided to make one. You can add textures straight from your own uh, texture map, so under your materials. You can add blend textures straight away to it. You can uh, import tech, or you can import materials, you can import textures, you can import material maps. The nice thing this thing does for you is if we go under here and ungroup this, it will group up pretty nicely. It names everything perfect. Building roof taper, building door, building wall siding. And what it gives you is, as it shows right here, it UV maps it for you. It throws on material IDs for you. So this is material ID 5 and 7. So if I actually went group, not really close. Group close. So, oh, I ungrouped it. All right, we'll go to this one. And actually, I'll just undo that a bit more. And there. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. 91 entities. Jesus, that's a lot. From one group of 91 entities. Look under materials. And we'll select this material. And as you see, it already has it all nicely set up for you. So literally what you could do, it's not the most, uh, not the most, uh, how should I say it? It's not the most efficient way of it. It certainly wouldn't be I would I do, but it is amazing for it being procedurally generated. You got your bricks in there. What I would do mostly is just take like four or five of them and put them to the same brick. You got your metals, your plastic, your concrete, your glass, and uh, window glass. And it's all named for you. It's just an amazing script. So, what I want to do though is make a nice little render because that's what I'm like. And if you know my most of my videos, you know. Uh, how to do it quickly, but I'm going to do a quick little render here and show you guys how to do it again because why not? So we'll make a mental ray, so I'll assign render ray. And if you really want one, this part three of my first tutorial, so my class shattering one, is probably the best one to look at for this. Nice little render. So just make a great material that we use on this building right here. Also, yeah, make sure when you're doing uh, ment when you're going through the previews of it, it'll give you a warning of saying use scanline set mental ray, and that's probably because that's what it uses, and it's faster anyways. Close our material editor. I'll make a plane, and I'm just really getting that material editor again. And we'll zero the plane, zero zero. It's on the plane somewhere. It's here somewhere. You know what? I want another one. Do that something 
at we'll scale you up because I want you like that. And I'll put this material in there. Uh, add in a quick little daylight system. Click yes on the warning message. It's just saying you're adding a uh, daylight system. You want to add an exposure control. And we'll turn on the MR Sun. In our sky, yes. Well, the physical environment map. If that doesn't show up, just go under here eight and add in a physical map by clicking on it, and it'll be under here somewhere. Um, and also, if it doesn't say MR photograph storage control, just click on that. We want to make it outdoor night daytime with clear sky. And where will heads? Ten. Let's get my render set up. Turn on HDPV 12 8 by 720 This is just a quick one. It's not meant for you guys to uh, follow through as quickly as, or as easily as most things. And now, as you see, very nicely generated building. The, the windows are kind of hard to see because, well, actually that makes a lot of sense because we didn't indent them at all. We need to make a different material on them. But, as you see, they're not indented at all. Oh, they're indented slightly. But that's the way it is. And there you go. So that script is very good at generating uh, little buildings. It would, I would love to see stuff you guys can pull off with it. I just looked at this for about two days, pulled it apart, and decided to make a video on it because it was cool as all can be. And yeah, show me what you guys can do with it. I would be interested in that. And you guys probably are much better at it than this little quick 45 minute tutorial when you can put hours into it or whatever and you're not tired at three holy geez why is it three in the morning <laughs> anyways I'm sorry I'm out of practice I will get a caustic tutorial up for you I'm um, looking forward to doing that one that one looks really fun but yeah that is the building generator script and the link below will be the link will be below in the uh, description as well as I don't think no I don't think there's any other tutorials on that but yeah the link will be below in the description to download it and hope you enjoyed sorry I'm a bit rough still cheers.